Mr. Butler. Just uh, wondering if council would uh, would support a motion to bring up. We have a couple um, delegations almost in the audience from council discussions. The uh, the McLean council discussions. If we could move that up. They uh, the McLeans called town hall today and asked if they could. Just need a seconder. All in favor of the motion. Motion carries. So, Mr. and Mrs. McLean. Mike's still on. So. Maybe I'll just let the people at home know what this is about. Uh, the widening of Dunn Road North. Uh, McLean's have a possible safety concern with the, the development and widening of this road. So that's why they're here tonight. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, um, my name is Dennis, my wife Peggy here. Um, we're, <clears throat> we're approached by um, the administration of uh, Town of Essex about widening um, <clears throat> the Dunn Road and affects our farm and our uh, house and everything like that. But uh, when we start they told us, you know, they're going to be uh, widening it, and uh, so before we start negotiations about what land they need it, uh, we asked them to come out to put the stakes out of how much land they need to take off of us, and the layout of the intersection of Gore and Dunn. And when they did that, we approached uh, the town of Essex, saying, you know, like, are you sure you've got the stakes in the right location because it doesn't line up with the south side of the road. We're on the north side of Gore Road and this is the south side. And um, <clears throat> so they came out and they said, well, you know, like, yeah, we can make it work and everything. And I, we had different friends and other people who are uh, involved with road department and that. And we also had uh, Bill Baker and John Scott both came out and we said, like, we're really concerned about the intersection itself. The way it's laid out right now is not safe because to make a left-hand turn, it uh, go east off of uh, uh, Dunn Road is not a safe way because in the uh, proposal the uh, <clears throat> view is not a good situation so that you know so the main reason we're here tonight is uh, John and Bill both came out and we had a very good discussion with them uh, and we mentioned to Sherry too uh, about our concerns and we're saying like you know no one is from the town of Essex has come out to talk to us and say you know yes there is a safety issue at the intersection and then the other issue we have with the safety is the uh, 90 degree turn at the very back of our farm um, you know <clears throat> I've lived there all my or like you know for over 30 years and been going down that road since I was a little kid and um, what do you call it? A lot of young people in the past try to do that turn really fast, and so we're concerned uh, that if you're putting bicycles down there, that you know, uh, to make sure that no young people or you know anybody hits anybody uh, walking or bicycling and stuff like that. So that's some of our concerns, and so that's why we're here tonight and want to hear what you say. Thank you, sir. Councilor Folks. Thank you. Um, recognizing the concerns, I'm going to obviously turn to, if we could, turn to our infrastructure director, Chris Nepsey, for some views on this. And then, obviously, Chris, I'm going to ask if there's a, a, you can afford the opportunity to maybe do a site plan visit, or a site visit, I should say. I'll, I'll let you um, talk to that, if you could, please. Uh, through your worship. Um, We've been in contact with the McLeans throughout the process. Um, Richard Boslay, our manager of Capital Works, uh, Heido Mickelson from um, uh, Peralta Engineering, and, and we definitely uh, understand the, uh, the sensitive nature of their property and its proximity to the road as it exists and, and how it's going to impact them in the future. So um, I also thank you for the letter, and unfortunately, I wanted a formal response for tonight to the letter, um, but between back and forth with the engineer, I couldn't have it done for this meeting. So um, shortly this week, 
we will be responding to each one of these uh, in a formal letter that council will get a copy of. Um, I'll hand deliver that and we can go through each one of them with the McLeans and the engineer um, this week. So I'll set up a time with you uh, when the engineer is available and you're available and, and we can answer each one of these um, uh, specifically. So. With that being said, to the McLeans, is it, do you find that satisfying? That, that's obviously a positive step, right? <clears throat> yes. Like, okay. Like, that's what our. That's why we sent the letter was because when the land appraiser he came, when you know everybody come to our place, they says like, this doesn't look right. Mm -hmm. And so, like, the point is like, we don't want you to start expropriating property from our side of the road when maybe you should be going on the uh, east side and that's the main reason we're here that saying that you know the whole design I think should be completely laid out like um, I'm just saying like uh, usually whenever I start a project I like to see from point A to point B and uh, drawing and you know but you've already started in the center and the other two ends don't look or our end doesn't look right and so I just want to make aware of that that you know we're really concerned about the safety and uh, you know what property do you really need because we don't want to sit, uh, let some of our front yard go when you don't need it so that's why we uh, had invited Baker so and Bill, John and Bill out so then with the, with that being said then obviously in recognizing all your concerns once once Chris was to meet with you again as our infrastructure director and, and we look at what's uh, what it all boils down to in the remaining issues then collectively there might be an opportunity to look at them and get, come up with uh, some form of agreed resolution to those particular problems. But let's, uh, let's let Chris do his, his thing as a director and then we'll, we'll move from there. Okay, thanks very much. Yeah, thank you. We got uh, oh, more questions yeah. or comments, I think, so you just want to hold still? <laughs> sure. Councilor Baker. Thank you. We did meet with you, and, and, and we had listened to the concerns, and while, while we're not engineers, of course, and, uh, but we do know that there's a process, and that's why we suggested that everything be put in writing so that, so that administration has a chance to really bring in the right people from an engineering point of view so that we can address each of those issues. I don't disagree with some of your concerns on here. However, we need to make sure that we have the right people behind it in terms of the engineer. And I, do, and I, do, I will say that uh, Mr. Nepsey was on vacation and he said as soon as he gets back to get in touch with an engineer. So now we've got the formal process and keep in mind that this is still a public process and having your stuff documented in letters is good so we can start with, with that. So um, Chris and his department will now be able to address each one of these, okay? So thanks a lot for coming. Okay, thank you. Anything further? Thank you very much. Thank you. Motion to receive there. Deputy Mayor Malash, Councillor Baker, any questions? All in favor? Motion carries. Bonnie. Okay. <laughs> I guess I'm the gopher tonight. I'd like to make a motion to, to have uh, Steve on behalf of the BIA to, to bring, bring up the BIA presentation. That was a motion supported by Councillor Scott. Any questions? All in favor? 8H. All in favor bring that forward? Any more? Okay, wait, it's carried. Uh, just before, come on, Steve, and whoever else. Uh, just before they get going here, we'll have a slight presentation from our CAO, Russ Phillips. Okay, Russ. As way of background, administration has participated in a number of verbal and written conversations with uh, Mr. Steve Dorkman of the BIA and with specific Talbot Street business owners respecting the lands and parking facilities in the area of the recently constructed fire hall and public parking on Alice Street. Uh, certainly without being prescriptive or critical, it would appear that better means of communication throughout this process and through this planning and construction may have aided the project uh, and potentially alleviated some of the current concerns. As recently reported in the media, the primary issue surrounds the parking lots behind these businesses, not just the town-owned lands, 
and the newly constructed parking lots adjacent to the Alice Street Fire Hall, but also to the condition of the, own, of the privately owned uh, parking facilities and the laneway, which is also privately owned behind those businesses. These concerns uh, include drainage due to changes in the elevation levels, alleged damage to the privately owned lots from excessive traffic uh, from the use of these privately owned properties during the construction of the fire hall. And uh, some of these allegations will suggest that the, the, the property owners have, will suggest that the contractors owned construction vehicles and those of various subtrades were using those areas as staging areas during the construction. And certainly it, it impeded their own ability to attract uh, c customers to their businesses during this period of time. A series of other discussions, most recently we had a meeting with them uh, a couple of weeks ago and uh, at that meeting we discussed items of having to do with poor visibility, accessibility and signage. There are certain changes that administration has studied and would be relatively inexpensive such as redesignating the emergency personnel spaces to be furthest from the restaurants and I confirmed that uh, with the Chief Pillon today that uh, that can be accommodated rather readily, so in Mr. Borkman's presentation, I think he'll speak to that. I rest assured that that is a change that we believe we can make. Uh, additional signage and advertising, the free parking can also be made available, and I would suggest that those are uh, steps that can be taken in that. Certain specific pedestrian traffic safety matters were also requested, and those are under study by our infrastructure group. The issue of drainage, though, is the more complex matter. Land drainage upon the businesses, the business-owned parking lots in this area, historically shed water to the southwest. That was it would leave the businesses behind, and flow across their lots and flow onto the town-owned lands adjacent to the fire hall properties. A portion of the land drainage originating on the privately-owned lands would have drained across there. The parking lots to the rear. Have, were not graded appropriately to collect all the storm water, so is my understanding. I, again, I'm not an engineer. I think that was <laughs> alluded to earlier. But it would be, appear to be a, hist a historic problem. When the new fire hall and the accompanying new town parking lot was constructed, the elevation of the Alice Street lands were raised, and which has eliminated at least part of the, uh, si or significantly reduced the land drainage from crossing over in the, that southwest. However, it's trapped the water at the edge of the uh, privately owned lands. Hence, following any significant rainfall, water is pooling upon the privately owned parking spaces and uh, as it no longer sheds across there. On a without prejudice basis and simply to assist, the town administration did undertake uh, actions earlier this year. We studied uh, a particular catch basin immediately behind the A1 restaurant. That was cleared. Uh, it was looked at and cleaned and then it was realized that it was still blocked. Uh, it was televised, I think, after a point, and Mr. Nepsey can speak to that if, if called upon, but it's being televised and proven that there is a blockage some 20 feet down the line uh, from that. Senior administration has held firm the position that the responsibility for land drainage belongs to the originator of the drainage. That's a tenant usually or generally used by municipal operations universally, uh, certainly practiced by the town of Essex. Uh, that said, it's clear from the comments of the businesses and the BIA that their parking properties were used for the staging of equipment during the construction, and this undoubtedly has generated some wear and tear. And the contractor, I believe, is here with us this evening, as well as uh, Mr. Sadamo Velardi of Archon Architects uh, out of Windsor, who was the architect of, uh, that worked on the project, and they will have some, perhaps some video evidence of the condition prior to the construction. Of serious concern and one voiced by the businesses are the reported financial losses that they experienced during the construction and since. While not proven by any evidence and nor have we asked for any evidence from them, uh, a degree of business interruption is evident. Uh, in this instance, the impact on public parking, something the town has historically provided, was jeopardized during construction. Further, the impact on the business owner's own parking lots was obstructed, allegedly by the contractor's vehicles themselves but also by adjacent ac construction activity and by those using the parking lot. It was interesting, I saw a picture today, the chief brought me in a photo of a, of a vehicle. I don't know if they were trying to make a point or if this was just uh, another situation that I know I've had conversations uh, with some of the property owners in there, that one truck parked against the generator pack effectively blocked everybody into that lot, either in or out. So all it took was one Ford F-150 and, and basically the entire lot back there was jeopardized. 
To what degree this occurred is difficult to determine, um, but it's quite evident that the impact was more severe than it needed to be had the contractor and subtrades been instructed right from the get-go, I believe, that this was a privately owned laneway and they should remain off of it and stay away from it. That's, uh, and it had adhered to that. Uh, we've had conversations with the contractor and the architect and they did take measures, they've assured us, to, re to reduce that impact, but we've also heard from the business owners that that is not the case. Um, it's very unclear, except to, uh, to look at a visual map of the property or the property records to determine what is public and what is private to the casual observer and I think many of us in this room would believe that that's a public laneway when it really isn't. Uh, the, the properties to the north east of the of the fire hall are mostly up to the separation of the the fire hall is a privately owned laneway. Administration has had difficulty determining any conveyance of title as to the land drainage infrastructure however the owners do believe that uh, it belongs to the town. Uh, it is our opinion these would be the responsibility of the landowners and any maps and drawings and title that we've searched on would indicate, indicate thus. There does exist easements for the sanitary sewer, the water and gas, but none are found regarding the land drainage, which is not unusual, again, given that most land drainage is the responsibility of the landowner. The level of finish and maintenance of the asphalt surface across the privately owned lots varies significantly. Some lots are of poor condition and have little or, or no asphalt remaining, while others were recently repaved a couple of years prior to the works being taken on this last year. And we're, we're certainly sensitive to the concerns of the businesses, and we, we have conveyed a willingness to assist in certain aspects. However, staff are not in a position to offer any compensation without having first brought this to the issue, this issue to the attention of Council. It was determined at a meeting arranged by Steve, of which Chris and I attended on September 4th, that the owners should collectively uh, pool their resources and address this matter together with Council. It's seen as a collective mat matter, and uh, at, uh, Steve will speak to the, to the owners' positions uh, forthwith. Thank you, Russ. Okay, Mr. Bjorkman, you have the floor, sir. Okay, well, I think, Russ, you covered everything, except how we're going to fix it. Um, we're here today mainly because most of our businesses on the west side of Talbot North that abut the fire hall have lost considerable business over the last year and a quarter. The, uh, the hardships caused during construction have continued on after construction because once you lose a customer and they find somewhere else to go and they're happy there, they don't need to come back. Uh, those are the kinds of things that regardless of we've got a nice parking lot, doesn't get them to leave the place they've gone to now. Um, during the uh, construction, uh, just an example, uh, Schenkel's uh, were uh, getting their del meat deliveries from Alice Street and, and hauling across the, uh, the parking area um, that was under construction into their stores. Uh, the Grand had beer trucks that would have to stop on Victoria or they'd have to block traffic on Main Street so they could uh, load in there. Um, as to loss, people would, uh, that would come for lunch uh, during the construction, uh, we had one way in uh, that they opened up for us on the uh, east side of the fire hall and then we had the exit to Victoria where well, you'd have a, a cement truck on one side and a gravel truck on the other side. People have finished their lunch and need to get back to work. There's no way to get out. So there are people that just would not come back. They're, they wouldn't come there and we have many people on that area that are seniors or uh, uh, disabled in some way that could not use the parking lot across the street and off behind the dollar store. So those people also found somewhere else to go. Um, again, once they've left, it's very difficult uh, to get these people back. Now, we expect to have some disruption when we have a, a construction project. Uh, if they're redoing Main Street, redoing sidewalks, uh, you're going to lose <clears throat> some business and customers. That wasn't the case here. Here we were building a new fire hall. This wasn't an improvement to bring more people or to make it more accessible to get people downtown. 
This was something as a project, as a municipal project, that impacted the businesses all down Main Street. Um, getting to the catch basin, uh, we, we did have drainage. We had a nice big parking lot before, and whatever didn't fit down into that drain, if it was really pouring rain, it would drift off towards Alice Street. But it did drain. The next day you would come, and there would be no water there. This last storm season, there would be four days where that water was so deep, people couldn't park their cars. They'd be getting out of their cars, and they're, they're, they were stepping down to above their ankles in water. If we don't fix that before winter, that is going to be frozen. People are going to be getting out of their vehicles with some snow on the ground, and someone's going to get hurt. That catch basin is behind A1. But that's not A1's responsibility. That, that drains a number of, of stores, uh, uh, parking lots. So to say, OK, well, that, that business owner, that's his responsibility. So the rest of us could just sit back. Obviously, we wouldn't. It's a, it's a collective. We work back there as a collective. That parking lot is kept clear. We all work together. We all benefit from it. Um, but at this time, we have businesses that are closing. We have businesses that are laying people off. We have businesses, we have two big empty stores that everybody knows about. We have two people that are on the brink of not being able to carry on. And everybody has lost business. What we're asking for is for the town to have a look at that and say, you know what, we do carry some of the burden of what happened here. We do need to help these business owners improve their lot, make things right, and show that there's there's uh, something that this council is prepared to do. The, uh, I'm going to lose my... Uh, you, you covered everything so well there, Russ. There's things I'm just jumping over here. Um, this area deserves special status. It's not just another private parking area that's fallen into disrepair that needs to be fixed. The presence of these large construction vehicles idling on the asphalt, overweight for the present base that's there, as well as bobcats scraping the buildup of mud and spilled gravel, accelerated its decline. There's no doubt about that. This is a special case based on the fact that the construction of the fire hall wasn't there to benefit businesses or to increase traffic or increase access in the long or short term. The old parking lot was always full and had better access to our businesses in that people parked directly behind. It's a beautiful parking lot and we're happy to have it, but it didn't make things better and it isn't going to increase business to those stores. Our businesses have always supported the town through sponsorships, fundraisers, taxes, employment, and many of these businesses are long-term businesses. You all have been there, you all know them. Um, again, we have two large empty stores now and a couple just getting by, and we're asking for the town to support us. So thank you for your time and your attention to our issues, and if you have some questions, we'd be happy to answer them. Thank you, Steve. Thank you. Have Councillor Vokes first. Thank you, Your Worship. Uh, thank you, Steve, for the presentation. Obviously, um, and I, I only want, can speak for myself, I'm, I'm very concerned with the outstanding concerns that are, are affecting the businesses downtown. There's no doubt about it that, that we're in a, a period that is obviously, uh, you know, the, the business are losing that strong foothold, and I think we all have to afford the opportunity to help. My concern is this, is my concern is that the file this evening is too big, if you will, to really get our arms around it, to really get an understanding, to get an understanding of what's, what's been and what could be resolved and then again, at the conclusion of that, what's outstanding and what needs to be recovered and what, what opportunities need to be there. So it would be my suggestion, obviously council's going to debate it here, um, but I, I would ask that the debate don't go on too long and that, that at your next BIA meeting, that the council take the proactive approach and the council attend your BIA meeting. And we have those discussions to to figure out what we need to do to assist in getting uh, a problem to a lot of these, these concerns you have. So I don't know when your next BIA meeting would be, but I think it might be a afford more affordable opportunity. Because I can see what's going to happen here tonight. I can see 
council, and I might be wrong, I might be proven wrong, but some type of report coming back from administration, right? That's what's going to happen. And that's okay. That's positive. That there, nothing, nothing bad obviously comes out of that. But I would like to really sit down with the business people, sit down with administration, and sit down collectively with the BIA to have those candid discussions of what we need to do collectively, all of us, in order to get a resolution to the outstanding concerns. Well, the, uh, the group would be just those businesses. I'm, I'm, I am the chair of the BIA, but I'm here representing my wife's store and the six stores along that way. Um, we understand that you can't just say, okay, here's some money, go fix it, or here's a contractor, go fix it. Um, our suggestion was that the town provide some tax relief to the businesses. If they provided a tax relief of one quarter of a year of taxes and allowed us to pool that money and with our own resources, we'll hire our own contractor so it's not on the town, nobody comes back and says, oh, you guys hired this group, you pay for it, we'll take care of it. But if we did that with one quarter of a year's uh, tax relief, we could take care of that problem ourselves. So with that being said, Steve, if I understand you right, is that the only issue then that is of concern? Is that, is, is the recovery of, of some type of funding to, to pay for that? That's what we would like to see is some support from the town right. in a tangible way that says, you know what, we understand what's happened here, we understand what's going on with your businesses, and we want to help you. Okay. We have Councillor Baker and then Deputy Mayor Malash. Uh, thank you, through you, Your Worship. Steve, thanks, and I, you know, I can feel your your uh, frustration with regards to anything that happens, you know, when it affects business, because it's always tough to, to maintain and retain your customers. So we've got two issues here that I want to understand is is uh, the effect of what happened from the construction, which to me to to really f determine the issue here, who should be responsible for the drainage issue. That's number one, right? The second thing is moving forward now, um, it's about, let's say the drainage is fixed. What, what is stopping business from coming now? Is there anything that, as a result of the fire hall and the parking lot, that business is not coming? Uh, one of the things that we believe would be very helpful is uh, people don't, don't know that they can park in those empty parking spaces at the fire hall. That gives us 10 more spaces directly behind our businesses. And when you're talking about diners and restaurants, people who, who have less mobility, it gives them an opportunity to get there directly. Um, and that's one of, the, one of the things that would really help us is to have that. So, so in moving forward then, it's really about um, communication and promoting and awareness of the fact that come back downtown, things are good. Um, there is places to park, really, right? Yeah. If, we, if we deal with the other issue. My, my other question is going to be through uh, to administration, and uh, I just need some clarity maybe, Russ. Uh, um, are we even uh, able to give tax relief, or would we have to, to really assist in other, other ways? Uh, are we permitted to give tax relief? That's my first question. Through your worship, I would prefer to defer this to the treasurer. I believe it would have to be done through grant. We have a, an obligation to collect all tax. It would have to be in the form of a grant, I believe. That's right. So, I mean, I think what uh, Councillor Vokes is suggesting is obviously makes sense. Let's sit down and listen to the concerns. We have them. This is a lot to do in one night. But there's two issues here. The drainage issue, who should be responsible and at what cost. And the second thing is moving forward, how do we assist in helping with the business if, in fact, it's, it's been affected by the construction, right? So I think between those two issues, we can, we can come up with something, hopefully, and look at that, too, because we definitely... Um, we want to make sure that uh, we realize that uh, Essex Center is open for business and uh, people can come back down. Okay? Thanks. Deputy Mayor Malash and Councillor Bowman. Thank you, through you, Your Worship. Steve, thanks for the presentation tonight. Uh, this was an issue that just recently uh, Council just found out about. It wasn't something that we were informed about ahead of time. And uh, we just received uh, Russ's um, information just very recently here. So. We're just uh, kind of hearing it for the first time. But um, I, think, I think that all the council wants to, uh, to try and alleviate the problems that you're having. There's no doubt. As to how we're going to succeed in doing this, I think it's going to be uh, something that has to be negotiated through administration so that they can help us out trying to figure out what we can do or what we can't do. And uh, 
what they believe too would be um, a best fit. It's going to have to be some compromise between the two, the businesses and town administration in uh, reality. So uh, I think at this point in time we need to let uh, the, the two groups hash it out, try and figure out what's going to be a good mix and then at some later point in time come back to council with your ideas or where it's going to fall out and let us know once you guys have something that's that's fair that both sides feel are fair and then if one side doesn't feel it's fair again make it uh, known to council so that we can try and get it ironed out but at this point in time I don't think there's any solution uh, from either side that's a hundred percent so we need to have both groups continue discussion and then it and then very near future, hopefully in two weeks from now, or three weeks when, when we have our next council meeting, both groups can come back, present it to council and say, this is what we've come up with a plan. Is everybody okay with this? So that would, that would be my suggestion anyway. Thank you. Okay, well, sure. we've, we've, been, we've been discussing this with administration since May. Uh, we've had many discussions, informal, um, but uh, it's, it's not something we're not aware of. Uh, we've had a meeting with the businesses and uh, administration last week. Um, we kind of understand that we've been told that there's not something that the town can't just pay for things. They can't use a contractor because they take on now the, the warranty, they take on the insurance, they take on the risk. Um, so if there's a way to help the businesses and to show that we're going to do that, um, it has to be we understand it has to be a way for us to be in charge of the money that we spend and there has, there has to be a, a way for the town to help us out with that that's that is where we are right now follow thank, up. thank you so Steve is it just is it's just strictly drainage that you're you're talking about we need no we're talking about the drainage and we're talking about the parking lot but the drainage has to be done before it gets cold and the parking lot you're talking about is specifically just right behind the stores? Right behind the stores. Okay. The uh, issue about the parking spaces that everyone thinks are designated towards fire department, uh, would it help to have a sign there that says this is all public parking, something to that effect? Well, actually, uh, Mr. Phelps has already addressed that uh, when, we, when we met. He spoke with the fire chief and said that they believe they'll be able to move the, the EMS parking all down the um, I guess south east side if you will and that the park the, the parking spots across the back will be labeled as public parking okay perfect. So that's going to help us okay that's at least something <laughs> thanks okay I have our CEO Russ Phillips with a couple comments and then Councilor Bowman and Councilor Vokes thank you your worship uh, through you um, I know Chris is showing on screen right now the layout of the parking facility and as being addressed by Steve and certainly the businesses uh, it, it uh, I was not a part of the design but ultimately the new configuration does not serve the business owners as well as would have been expected or as well as they had previously although the parking was largely unorganized and not lined as I understand it worked for them uh, the fact is that those first 10 stalls that you see, uh, thank you, Chris, along that front there, just in that area there, currently are signed for emergency personnel. Those are the closest stalls adjacent to the stores, and it was evident, made evident by the business community last, or two weeks ago, I guess, when we met with them, that if those could be changed over, and we will take measures to do that. As I said, I spoke to the chief today, and we are going to try to reaccommodate those further down beside the fire hall. It probably is a better fit for both parties. Put them over to the uh, other side to the, yeah. And uh, there's four stalls at the end of there where Chris is showing the cursor. It's hard to see there right now, but those four stalls are reserved for the EMS staff in that location right now. So they're probably not a bad fit. But the fact is that there's now for the, peop for the business community, while there formerly was access across Alice and back out to Victoria, now they're really lo locked in on only one means of egress, and that's at the corner off of Victoria. And so th there's, a si there's a sight line problem there. There's, there's visibility, some pedestrian concerns, and a number of other things that have been raised by the community. 
we're, we're working on those. Chris has got them under study right now. We're, there's some measures that we think we can take that will assist in accommodating that. Getting back to the asphalt, if you look, I don't know if you can bring that drawing up any further uh, to the north there, Chris, or not, but it, what each of the lots is finished to a different degree. The Behind Jonesy's, behind the A1 restaurant, that's two or three year old asphalt. Uh, behind Lou's, Lou Parish, I, I don't know how much asphalt you got back there anymore, but it's, there's not much. And what it is is pretty old. Um, behind some of them, there, it's, it's turned to rubble, it's turned to gravel. So for the town to hire a contractor and say, let's go in there, we, we believe we assume some liability. We take on the responsibility and we, we don't recommend that. What, and that's why Steve is recommending that they take it on, provided that the town assists in the costs or recognizes that there's some, you know, there's been a, an, a, an interruption to their service, to their business, and there's been a problem with the construction of this, this particular project that's interrupted their, their livelihoods as well as caused some discomfort. Um, the number of stalls, uh, the previous number of stalls, and I believe these were issues that the council dealt with many months ago, long before I got here, was I, I think those things were raised then, that there's a number of parking stalls that have been lost to them. Well, it's a beautiful parking lot. It's got brand new asphalt and lighting and everything else. Um, it's impeded their their livelihood uh, to to their si on their side. Uh, even such things as the location of the generator pack, uh, it, I know that's a concern to to those. That's not something that I would recommend the town now look at at moving. It, it would be a great expense, but it sits right on that property line and it impedes traffic from moving through that one exit or that one egress back out to Victoria. So it's, it, uh, it's been an issue that's been fraught with some concerns and uh, certainly I think communications uh, hopefully are getting better and we can, we can work to find a way of resolving some of these, these matters. As far as improved signage, I think that that's a, that has to be done uh, both on the site and perhaps even go beyond that, you know, take out some advertisement just to promote the downtown as a destination, just to assist, you know, in terms of an economic development initiative uh, on our website, those types of things. Those are things I would work with our communications manager on. Uh, but certainly the immediate measures are the safety of pedestrians in and around Victoria, and then the drainage matter. I, th my understanding, Chris, correct me if I'm wrong, the earlier estimate that we had to look at the first catch basin. That's the one that we know is blocked. It was somewhere in the twenty-five to $3,000 range, something like that? Uh, through your worship, yeah. That's assuming that we can fix just that blockage. So open it up, fix one blockage, and, and not be compounded by others, and, and, and get in there, close it up. Somewhere in the neighborhood of twenty-five hundred to $3,000 to fix what appears to be the blockage right now. Yeah. We're not, what Chris is saying, we don't know how far back that line, well that line eventually uh, conveys land drainage into the town system, but where it connects and how, if there's any other further uh, blockages or encumbrances along the way, we don't know. But at this point in time, we believe to liberate the one catch base and it would be a, a twenty-five or $3,000 touch to get it going. Okay, thank you, sir. Mr. and Councillor... Okay. Oaks and then Councilor Baker. Actually, I think my question was answered with regard to the amount of money that required to uh, f fix that blockage. I mean, it's a temporary fix, I understand, not a, a system uh, uh, checkout, but that particular blockage. So I think that, that number has already been uh, provided. Thank you. Thank you, Councilor Oaks. Thank you, Worship. I'm going to go back to where I was, I guess, 15, 10, 15 months ago again. Here we are, we're, we're obviously trying to come up with a resolution how to support it financially. I, I seen Donna give that deer in the headlights look when she asked if we could do it through a tax reprise somehow. I think shit, that's probably history making for her in all of her years of serving in, in the business she does. So with that being said though, I'm not saying that opportunity may not be there, but I, I think it affordably we should give Donna a little room to stretch her legs, uh, look at the file, look at opportunities and again reconvene and we meet and we discuss it because there's going to be a lot come out of it. it. And I know how it happens. We get emails and then we, here's what we can do, a report from Donna through an email, and then we're not all under the same roof, if you will, talking to it. We're not with you talking to it. So for the sake of a, a concentrated hour somewhere, again, I encourage all of us to reconvene, have Donna get it in administration, 
look back at it, look at uh, opportunities to to alleviate the financial strain of the construction of it, understand it and collectively agree or disagree to it, and then move forward from there. Because it, it is, it's going to it's going to go around in circles here tonight, and I I have those fears that there's going to be a lot of little fragments all over the place and nothing in definition as to exactly what we're going to do here tonight. That would be my strong recommendation that we, we do that. We'll leave that meeting with a real understanding of exactly where you stand and where we stand and what we can do to, to fix the problem. But it's hard, that, that's a tough, plan, tough question to answer in a respectfully a half hour period here tonight. Okay, Council Baker, before I give you the mic, I'm just going to say I can eliminate these circles going around in circles and going around circles. This is the second time Councilor Vokes and Councilor Baker are speaking to the issue. If we go back to the rules, it's one shot, so save everything, all your ammunition you got, bring it to us, and we won't be here all night going around in circles. Okay, Councilor Baker. Mine is just a clarity from a question that was brought up later on, so I couldn't really address it then. Uh, with regards to the, and this is uh, through your worship too, uh, Chris, Mr. Nepsey, you, you made an estimation of about $2,500, maybe to 3000 for this blockage. Is that correct? For the, you don't know how far it's going back, right? Uh, through your, your worship, yeah, just for that right. particular, where we, where we uh, estimate the blockage to be, yes. So, so what we're really t discussing here is, is who should be responsible for it at this point in time. Is that correct? Uh, I think through your worship, that goes for everything, yes. Yeah. yeah, including the blockage or the broken. It, it'd be incumbent uh, upon us. Yep. I mean, you know, we're, if we, we sit here and debate, debate who's responsible for this or not, um, it has to be fixed. I mean, it's about it's about the businesses that are. We made a parking lot there. Obviously, there's a problem. That problem may have existed before. We don't know. But I think we can, you know, say that somehow should move forward to get that fixed. Let's discuss how it's going to be covered later. If the BIA wants to maybe move forward, we give them the right to move forward to get that done. Let's do that. Then let's discuss later how we're going to pay for it. You know? Thank you, Bill. Sure. Mr. Scott, any comments? Mr. Neff, do you have some? Oh, okay. Go ahead. Mr. Mayor, can I suggest, in light of what Council Volk said, we have it, we organize a special meeting for this where we have it all out, talk about it, because I think this is not, you know, we want to be out before midnight, and I think that's the best way to do it. I would suggest that with support of Council, we have a special meeting prior to our next Council meeting, maybe, and, and discuss this separately. I think it's worth the time and the effort and the energy to do so. Okay, Chris? Uh, through your worship, I was just going to say, we've got, you know, the, the architect and the contractor here tonight um, and a lot of discussion or, or some of the discussion um, goes around the construction practices and what happened you know during construction uh, you know both Russ and I thought it would be best to have basically um, to have them here so that we can hear them sp speaking directly to those issues okay if council would so wish to hear from the gentleman in attendance. We need a motion and approval. Support that. Moved by Councilor Boak, supported by Deputy Mayor Malash. Any questions? All in favor of the motion. Motion carries. Gentlemen, we have two seats over here. There's two of you. You're okay, Russ. Or Chris, I think. Good evening, everybody. My name is Seth Movilardi uh, from Archon Architect, and uh, I was a project architect for uh, the project. And I've got here uh, Matt Sewer from PCR Contractors. He was our project manager uh, throughout the duration of construction from beginning to end. So um, we've, we've got a number of things we could provide to you to look at. Um, uh, some of them have to do with, with the pre-construction photos that we've uh, provided. Um, 
and, and that's um, mainly to give you an idea of maybe uh, perhaps what, um, what the condition of the area was before. Um, I don't know that there's um, specific um, a dispute that, that there was some, some disrepair to those existing conditions there. Um, but uh, if, if everybody um, who isn't familiar, uh, we can have a look at some of those images and I can bring those up now. Um, so if you look on the screen there, um, you can kind of get a sense of, of what the asphalt pavement looked like uh, in that area before. This is actually um, in new parking area now, um, but, uh, but in, generally, in general it was, it was in this condition for, for most of the locations. You can start to see here the border between basically where the um, existing parking is uh, now and where the uh, new, new areas are before. And of course that area where the puddle is located is actually uh, in, in new area on new uh, fire fireside uh, so that that particular item has been uh, alleviated but uh, just just for for discussion I guess um, you can see again uh, some of the condition of the of the asphalt here and certainly around the, the pole this has all been corrected with the new construction um, uh, but the residual amount these areas here that you can see around um, some of the existing catch basins that are actually on the property um, and if if I may um, some of these potholes and things of that nature I mean this is this is sort of the condition that it was was in when we when we sort of uh, absorbed it uh, again you can see those um, those conditions there um, particularly in these areas where it's you know barely just gravel or or um, you know, uh, a sort of a tarn pitch or whatever, however you want to describe it. So, um, I don't, I don't know that that um, that there's any particular dispute um, uh, in, in this consideration, and I don't know that um, again that we sort of that the construction work sort of exasperated any of this stuff, but um, it, it was um, sort of all there to to begin with, and uh, um, in. Uh, in my opinion, um, heavy truck traffic doesn't doesn't create this kind of uh, decomposition. Obviously, this is um, basically uh, poor subsurface conditions. Um, there's probably not a lot of base here. We're probably looking at an uh, inch and a half of asphalt on dirt, um, which is traditionally obviously not, not the way it's usually constructed. Usually, there's at least two lifts of asphalt um, that are about three and a half inches. Well, I mean, Chris might be able to better tell us, but then there's a series of granular materials below that to, to provide that support. So. Um, uh, and so this is this is basically just degradation over time um, that you know basically results from just poor construction, I guess, for lack of a better term. Um, uh, so you can see some of those conditions. We've we've provided. Um, there's also some images on here um, that we provided, basically, so you can kind of get a sense of of maybe um, what the alley looked like uh, uh, during construction. Um, so here's some overhead views that um, you can see uh, basically the hoarded off area. Um, uh, behind the construction site and where where the work uh, conditions uh, were undertaken um, uh, and how these um, areas were uh, basically hoarded off and that access was basically provided on an as required basis uh, to these areas of course this is later in construction when the asphalts uh, were already constructed and the the asphalt repaired um, these lines that you're seeing here are Union Gas's work um, that basically they undertook to provide new services uh, to all these buildings which uh, I believe the town um, paid for um, and then you can see kind of the condition of these of these areas during construction, um, and um, and uh, uh, how the work was undertaken. This particular truck is an Acon, uh, which is uh, Union Gas's uh, subcontractors, and you can see these yellow lines are all Union Gas uh, work, which is outside of our scope of work or outside of the general contractor's scope of work. Uh, but obviously, in order to access each individual site, they needed to. Um, work in those areas. Again, just some of the general understanding of maybe how the hoarding was constructed and where the work was sort of limited throughout construction. Um, and that hoarding fence stayed sort of intact through the duration of construction um, uh, up until the end. And you can see here where the construction traffic um, was oriented. And this is, of course, all the area that was actually reconstructed um, afterwards and during the course of construction. Um, again, most of the con equipment is sort of located within within the construction areas. Um, of course, there is um, temporary access that was provided through the site in order to access these businesses and these parking areas here. I can't say for certain whose cars they are. Uh, we assume it's probably uh, mostly uh, patrons, but it could be a mix of uh, individuals. You can see a refact truck here, which is a uh, general contractor uh, from, from our site, um, of course, but it's not a not heavy construction truck in those areas. And again, um, you can see some of that duration during construction here that uh, again that hoarding fence is, is intact and remain through the duration and that's something that, that PCR undertook um, through the whole time so um, I don't know if that uh, if that helps um, uh, the, the discussion at all 
um, but um, that sort of does give a bit of an overview of, of how those um, uh, how that work functioned during that time phase and we do um, I can give you a quick segment here of this uh, construction video uh, I believe the um, I'm just going to control this here. Oh, I can just slide that. I believe this starts at uh, 115, so I'll just skirt ahead. Oh, oh, I think it starts at 115. Um, so again, this is all pre-construction. This is around um, uh, May, I think May 22nd, uh, prior to construction. And um, again, just uh, you can sort of take, you know, follow us through the site here. You can see again. Uh, the condition, if this is useful for you guys, um, of, uh, of the site. Um, of course, this is all area that we replaced, um, and so it's probably not as um, useful, but it does sort of give you a sense of, of sort of the condition of the area um, and the um, juxtaposition of sort of parking lots and parking spots relative to where the construction and how cars were parked generally uh, in the area. So I don't know if that provides um, any additional information but you can see um, here these areas that have you know just basically grass or gravel same areas uh, patch basins here again so I don't know if that uh, Matt I don't know yeah if you have anything to add but again you can you can see the kind of spider cracking and and uh, uh, and the type of asphalt but this is certainly not um, heavy construction traffic um, again can see these conditions here. Um, if you walk out there today, it, it'll probably look very similar to, to this. Um, it, it certainly could have had additional wear and tear over the winter months. Um, there may have been an occasional uh, truck on it. I, I certainly can't uh, guarantee that, but you can see in the background there's some fairly significant trucks uh, that are parked um, in that area um, as they pan around here. I don't know if I can that helps people to see that but I mean there is other truck traffic that exists um, in this area too on a regular basis I guess um, so I don't know if that helps uh, helps anybody there Yeah, for what it's worth, I mean, that's um, that's information. Yeah. That's probably good, yeah. I mean, there is some more, but it's mainly the residual portions of the site, um, just as a general overview that the contractors perform as part of their scope of work in order to, you know, for these types of situations, I guess. Yeah, I, I can certainly add that on our own part, we, we did conduct uh, regular bi-weekly meetings, at which point, um, there, se there did seem to be active communication between um, the site, um, our site superintendent, and the businesses, um, and uh, we understood that those uh, issues were being taken care of um, by some of, the, you know, with respect to any of the concerns. I know that um, uh, Ed certainly expressed concerns uh, for the for the residents there, and uh, I know that PCR actively um, um, informed them of some of, of whatever conditions were going to be taking place to assist them. Although in, in many, you know, in some cases it's very hard uh, due to construction practices uh, to uh, organize things in such a way that you schedule them bang on. So there, there's certainly um, there's always inconveniences for sure. Um, but uh, in all honesty, I thought we did a good a good effort. We made a good effort to do that and uh, communicate the uh, the efforts of the construction work that were ongoing uh, and address those things that were brought up by uh, by Ed um, and on some occasion uh, by Wayne when he was still around and certainly um, uh, Donna when, when when she was available. So. Well, let Matt speak a little bit. As Seth had said, my name is Matt Salier. I'm with PCR Contractors, the Colavito Group. We, uh, at the beginning of the job, we did uh, discuss the phasing of it with the um, new construction of the uh, concrete paving from Victoria to the rear of the of the new fire hall. It was going to limit the access for the businesses. We allowed them to go through 
basically the construction area, hoarded it off an area and allowed them to go would be the far east side of the property in order to access. Otherwise, we would have cut off that parking area completely. So we worked with them as, as best as we could. Uh, I met with uh, Greg from Schenkels on, on a number of occasions. He had a tractor trailer. I believe it was Tuesday mornings. He needed to get beef in. We made every effort to get him in there. I think there was a time at one point during the construction where my superintendent was carrying meat across the site in order to facilitate his delivery. So we've done what we could for them. As far as any uh, construction traffic back in there, there may have been the odd vehicle. The only heavy vehicles would have been in there was during the paving process when we had to patch and match back behind the curb, which we required access for, which was part of our scope of work. That's uh, really all I can say about it. The construction video and the pre-construction photos kind of speak to the state of the parking area in the, in the uh, asphalt prior to. <laughs> Well, I don't think there's a need to question these gentlemen with what they've given us. Uh, we can put it in our folders up here, and when we do finally have a meeting with, you know, the BIA and the businesses in that area, you know, we can bring these topics up. But uh, I'm going to, we haven't got anyone else, right? So I'm going to, I have a few comments here. Though. There's quite a few, but I'll try to make it really fast. Uh, if you looked at that picture, a lot of people in town, if that was their street, they'd be complaining like crazy. You know, they, and that was before construction. So, you know, it was in bad shape. I know it was. All of us people that live here, we know it was in bad shape. How much worse did it get? That's, that's the question. We're all partners in this, by the way. You know, I heard about, you know, poor business people. And they are poor. Like, they did lose business over this. Hopefully, they do get all their people back. Plus, but we needed that fire hall. You know, it sounds like if we hadn't done it, we'd have had no problem. But it's too bad we hadn't gotten that thing done 20 or 30 years ago when it should have been done, and we wouldn't be here today. You know, and th these businesses, most of them, wouldn't have been here either today. You know, it would have been somebody else that had the burden. But uh, you saw the water, a little puddle of water near that hydro pole, that's close to where the drain was. So in my mind, something has happened to that drain since we've been building the fire hall. Because that little puddle of water that was near the telephone pole is close to the drain, but if that water wouldn't have gotten down in the drain that got down and left this little pool, that would have been a, you know, a wading pool where the drain is today. So I think we have done something to the drains during the transportation of all those big vehicles and everything. But I don't know that for sure. Uh, that, you know, we had to do that fire hall for the safety of not only the business people, but the whole town, the whole municipality needed that fire hall. It's just too bad that we have businesses where it happened to be built, you know. But that's where it had to go. So, and I will say, also to, to the deputy mayor's comment, not knowing anything, we've discussed this with business owners down there, BIA, recommendations, two or three, to the business owners get together and come to town council. Now, this has been all summer. You know, we finally got the BIA to come here, not the business owners in that area. You know, come as a group to us and talk to us. We'll see what we can do. So... Yeah. Well, you're right, but this has come to the BIA many times from the business owners, you know, that something needs to be done, and I hear it at our meeting. So finally, like Councillor Volk says, let's get together. Now, hopefully we can get more than Steve and Jonesy or Lou, who is here. Maybe we can get them all there, you know, and hear what they have to say, what we have to say, and we'll all know what they I think we have to assist you somehow. What way, we'll come up with it, I'm sure. So anyways, we're looking. Steve, I'll let you have the last word. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. To that point of getting us all there, we were all there. We had a meeting with all of us and Chris and Russ. And that, we were all there. And, and tonight, well, no, I understand that. But... Everybody came together as a group, not as a BIA, business owners. 
and we're prepared to do that again. So that will continue on. Our feeling was that we needed to go to administration first to see where we stood. Why come here and take up a meeting like this when we should be able to set a groundwork with administration? So we went that route. So we will now have a meeting with the council. Um, it's important for us to get this done now because we need that drainage taken care of. The, the pavement, like I said, there's a couple different options. Another one is we've got further into the business tonight with the streetscape and a potential CIP. If we can put parking lots as part of our CIP, there may be other monies that we can access and go after that. So there are other options. Uh, but this group of owners did come together. They have approached as one unit, and that's what we're doing here tonight. Thank you for your time. Thank you very much, sir. Motion to see. Comes to votes. I'm going to put a motion for it if, if council affords the opportunity to meet uh, September 25th, which is a Wednesday at, at 5 p.m. with the with Steve and, and anybody he may choose to bring along to talk about remaining construction concerns and financial recovery. Oh. You get a second or first before we discuss anything. Councilor Bundy. Councilor Bowman, I have a question. That's right. Please yeah. support the convention. Yeah, okay, so I don't want to, I, do, I know there was a suggestion doing it prior to the next council meeting, which takes us to the 7th. I was just looking at some way of, of advancing that by two weeks, right? So what about, what about the fall, because every day counts, right? So what about the following Wednesday? I would think instead of, Randy, setting a date, have administration give us a couple of dates when we could all be able to attend. You know, whatever works, as long as we can, just as the weekend. just it, it don't matter to me. Yeah. As long as we can expeditiously as we can meet with the business people, meet with collectively all of us to get a resolution in place. So if that comes from our administration of a date, then so be it. But let's get it done. I think we all agree to that. You know, to have a meeting, a couple of dates, so we can all attend if possible. Okay, so that's just a recommendation. May I have a motion to receive the report? Counter Bondi, Counter Bowman, any questions? All in favor of the motion? Motion carried. Also, we need to make sure we get those dates to the business people also so they'll be able to attend. 